How do time for Spider and Old Scooter? This is the uh, what? The twenty tooth of August. Um, El Presidente is at this very moment over in Phoenix, which isn't that far from Albuquerque, which I'm near, um, holding a political rally among his hardcore supporters who think he can do no wrong. And they may be right. Doesn't look like it from here. Anyway, this is the locked and loaded edition of Spider and Old Scooter. You can see down here in the corner, I've assembled a couple of my weapons, um, put on a sort of a gun-oriented hat. It looks like the infantry thing. I don't know what this hat was. Um, and um, look like I have a terrible cold. I do. But anyway, I, I'm locked and loaded there. Um, uh, the president uh, felt compelled to use that terminology um, when making uh, uh, threats uh, to North Korea. I'm sure he thought North Korea was unaware of the fact that we had, you know, uh, fields and fields of buried uh, missiles, silos, almost um, almost bomb-proof silos uh, with Minutemen missiles uh, all primed and ready to go on the uh, on two minutes' notice, um, or that we had these huge submarines, these atomic submarines under the sea, many, many of them with many, many of the um, Trident missiles, uh, and both the um, types of missiles, the Minutemen and the Tridents, are MIRVs, multiple um, re-entry vehicles, steerable multiple re-entry, so you can shoot by with as many as 10 thermonuclear weapons of each. I'm sure Kim Jong-un didn't know that. But, just in case he didn't, Trump had to say, we're locked and loaded, you know, ready to fire, just like this poor sick fellow over here with a bad cold. Um, it's macho talk, it's a special language, and that's it. he wants to speak it as often as possible. Do you speak macho? Oh yeah, oh yeah, locked and loaded. Anyway, that's why this is the locked and loaded edition. Um, I've got a brown dwarf to show you in a little bit. It has to do with this book. We're going to try playing a little... Uh, I, I think I'm going to do that every night, where I try to start the game and I push the stop button. This is the game. So let's just launch right in. I thought that would, uh, since uh, Ms. Spider has her face up, we don't have to put it up in the uh, opening scenes of this movie. Uh, so we'll just zip along as best we can. So far, everything is purely natural, color on color. And, uh, now that I'll experiment a little bit, have a two, don't need a two, so I'll take that back. Ms. Spider's not charging me for it. If you're not into this game, it's really a good game. This afternoon I was exhausted from doing hard labor, um, and I came in and just played like two or three games in a row, and I was totally mellowed out. It's a relaxing, distracting, get-your-mind-off-your-aching-body game. So what I'm going to do here, oh, ooh, see, there is a case to be made that you don't play as well when you're talking as you might if you were just concentrating. So I'm trying to shift to the balance of my CPU usage right now over to playing the game for a little while and just sort of speak uh, without much clarity or intent. Is that it? Okay. I'm going to stop it right there. We'll be back, and um, I have something else to say. What was it? Oh, about the brown dwarf. So we'll come back to finish this off in a minute. But in this book, uh, one of the characters, big, important character, super bad guy, <laughs> uh, sort of the villain of the story, lives in a brown dwarf. A small star that doesn't quite have the oomph to uh, get into hydrogen fusion. 
and uh, it just has its own saved energy mainly from some previous stage of its life. But it still has a lot of energy. Still, where it'll start, just way, way cooler and darker and so forth. So, I signed up for something. They send you interesting science stuff. I was trying to remember the name of it before I told you about it. I beg your pardon. I bet you could remember that. That's that's Gunner the Airedale making his trademark yawn sound. Um. Anyway, uh, this blog or email or whatever it was. I'll, I'll give them a plug some night. I just don't know what it is right now. They sent me a thing about, they sent interesting science stuff all the time, about um, new discoveries and speculations about brown dwarfs based on the new space-based telescopes and then supercomputing models. Uh, to estimate why they're seeing what they're seeing. They've decided that brown dwarfs have clouds and that uh, because of certain flickerings and so forth um, that they see with the big space telescopes, uh, particularly infrared, and they're about to amp that up some more. But anyway, they have a picture. What did I do with the picture of that great? Here it is. Check it out. That's not it, Scooter. That should go with the... Um, Locked and loaded. There it is. Isn't that a great brown dwarf? That's the supercomputer estimate of what it would take to see what the big t space telescopes are seeing. And when I, you know, I hadn't seen as dramatic a simulation of a brown dwarf as this before, even though I'd been writing about it and putting my bad guy. He's down there in the middle of it, you know, in some kind of super metal sphere. And he's very hard to find. Anybody in a brown dwarf would be... Would you look in a brown dwarf? I wouldn't. Anyway, so what I'll do is I'll go play three deals, uh, come back, and catch you up on the game. We haven't had a great start, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've played two. Uh, here's where I am. Not much is happening. Punched one hole in the thin blue line. No score. Um, just giving you an update. So, here I am, down to the last deal. Haven't done a lot since I saw you last, except score once, which was kind of nice. But you can see I didn't win by, or get this far by wiping out the thin blue line. It was just luck. It's just one of those when they all fall together in the right. You happen to get a bunch, it add up to a king-ace string, and boom, make a score. I didn't deserve it. It was luck. There, I did it. I just did it. I used, I didn't deserve it in the rare fashion. There's the rare and the frequent fashion for that phrase. I didn't deserve it. It's a whole sentence, I guess. Um, the one I just did, I acknowledged that I got something good, which I didn't deserve, you know. And that's rarely used. The most common one is when you get something bad. And you say, I didn't deserve that. Frequently, you know you did. It's just a defensive reflex. So that's the common way, and I just happen to use it in the rare way. I'm sort of proud of myself. It's a sign of virtue if you use it that way. All right, we're down to the last deal. I've shown you the brown dwarf. I have to check my notes to see if I did everything I would... I thought I might do, that I was interested in tonight. I'm just so glad I'm not watching the Trump rally in Phoenix live, which I'm sure it's available as. I'm sitting here talking to myself and playing Spider Solitaire, my favorite talk-to-myself game. And as much as I'm hammering away here, making a move here and a move there, I see quite clearly, I see clearly that it's really not going anywhere, I think. Sometimes if I make defeatist statements, something happens. It's magic. 
But you're not dead as long as you're kicking, and I'm still kicking here. So, that I might have done, but that would have been better. I don't think so. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time thinking about it. Ten. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a jack? Yes, it would. Someday. I'll have a hand puppet. And I will love it to death. You little son. You know. So, oh, oh, oh! Did you see that? It was sitting, you probably saw it like three minutes ago. I just didn't see it. But now I have two scores, so, you know. I'm ahead. I'm ahead $75. 500 to play, 550 to break even. I'm at 625. By golly, that's $75 ahead. So I have just had two little jackpots in a row on the one arm bandito. I'm sitting there with a cup full of change. So I'm not with my little cup of change. Feeling like I might run the table, which I think is, I've, I've struggled with that. I think it is the actual thing you say, you run the table. I, I, I'm not enough of a gambler. I don't know enough gambling games to know for sure what that means. Run the table. You run everybody off the table, you win from everybody. You pick up the table and run it up and down the aisle? I don't really know. I'm not going to Google it. If I really had to know, of course I would. But Just looking up everything at random is sort of weird and arbitrary. And so I'm trying to break myself of it. I spent a lot of time looking poop up. You know so much more after you do, of course. And as you walk down the street, people can see the wisdom radiating from your head. I guess. For some reason, we all Google a lot. And Bing and Yahoo. I don't Yahoo much. I do Bing quite a lot. Occasionally, you find something better on Bing. Better on Bing. It's a bumper sticker. Are we out of time? We're out of game. I've said everything I want to do. What did I... I wrote <laughs> silly notes uh, on on just the uh, words and phrases. I, I think the language is inherently funny, you know. Um, a miss is as good as a mile, for instance. All goes like this. It doesn't kill you. It was no more damaging. It couldn't have been any less damaging if it were a mile away. So that's pretty so. So I, for some reason, things came out of me as I was writing this. A miss is as good as a mule. A miss, I'll start with them. A miss is as good as a mugging. I think I'd rewrite that one. A miss is as good as a mystery. Now that, I like that one. Otherwise, I don't think I have anything else to say. And that's certainly been it for significance and... Uh, Meaning. Wait, wait, wait. Just thought I saw something. All right. I wish you more than you deserve. You may be quite virtuous and deserve quite a lot, but I wish you more than that. And if you're not so virtuous and don't deserve that much, I wish you more than that too. There, you're wished. Good night.